Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. It's Lauren here and today I'm going to bring you alongside me as I go thrifting around my local market. We are running low on furniture in our shop and our storage room is getting empty. So I thought there was no better time for me to take you guys with me thrifting. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on what I look for when I'm thrifting as well as what to avoid. So let's get on the road and hit the first thrift store. All right, here I am at the very first thrift store and we are actually at a Goodwill and in the Omaha area where I live, we have tons of Goodwills. I can't even probably count them on one hand, maybe two hands. I'm not gonna be going to every single Goodwill because we also have some more local thrift stores that I enjoy shopping at as well. But we're gonna start out here at this Goodwill. Whether you have Goodwills or local thrift shops, make sure that you're going pretty often. I really try to hit some, if not all thrift stores at least once a week sometimes even more if I'm really feeling it as and depending on what furniture I have maybe I don't need to go every week but if I've got a lower inventory or if I'm searching out specific pieces for clients then I am always at thrift stores checking on the new furniture that they have in so let's head into Goodwill and see what they've got some pretty small stuff here today. I don't see any dressers. I see lots of single chairs like this. Typically, I don't do single chairs. They don't sell. There's a little bookshelf here. One shelf. $5.99. Again, I typically try to stay away from just smaller things. They tend to not have a very good return on investment, ROI. These older TV media cabinets, or in this case, looks like it's a dresser of some sort. In my opinion, this type of style won't sell very well. Let's see if we can see the material it's made out of. So if you come around to the back here, you can see that this is actually made out of wood and there's actually not a veneer layer on the top. So this is a solid piece, but as for the style goes, not a huge fan. All right, first Goodwill was a bust. Like I said, really much smaller pieces than I really like to get. Um, I always think about my time investment and what I'm gonna spend the time putting into a piece to refurbish it or paint it or flip it, and then how much I'm actually gonna be able to sell it for. And really none in there tickled my fancy. And so we're on to thrift store number two. All right, here we are at thrift store number two. It's called St. Vincent de Paul. You can see it back there. But before we head in to this thrift store, I want to introduce to you our video sponsor for today, which is Blue Land. Much like when we're thrifting and sourcing secondhand furniture, saving furniture from the landfill, we are constantly thinking about ways that we can contribute to sustainability of our planet. And that is why we are so excited that we came across across Blue Land. Unlike your traditional liquid cleaners that are sold in single-use plastics, with Blue Land, all you need to clean your house and or hands is this nickel-sized tablet. You can fill your forever bottle with warm, hot water, drop one of the tablets into the water bottle, and then use it in minutes with no shaking or stirring needed. Instead of buying individual cleaning products or hand soaps, if you get a kit, you already get a 20% off savings. We got the Clean Essentials Kit, which came with the bathroom cleaner, glass and mirror cleaner, multi-surface cleaner, and my favorite, the foaming hand soap. 
products, I have a code for you to save an extra 15% off. All you have to do is click my link below to get 15% off of your first kit. You won't want to miss this. They never do this, seriously. Now shipping to the US, Canada, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. So thank you Blue Lynn for sponsoring this video. Let's head in to St. Vincent de Paul thrift store. So this is a bit of a newer thrift store that is near me. We've got lots of couches. chair so let's talk about this chair real quick I always lift up the skirt so this one has legs however the pattern of it is a no-go for me usually when I'm looking for velvet chairs I look for solid color and I look for it to be velvet and then I either look for the mid-century modern legs or the swivel rocker so this chair does not match those criteria so this store has some pretty good prices this one is $7.99 it is sold already but I just wanted to talk to you about it because it's probably one that I would definitely consider buying for eight bucks um, I would need to definitely replace the hardware but the drawers go in and out really nice I do want to point out that it doesn't have the dovetailing. Now that doesn't completely deter me from wanting to um, buy this. As long as it's well constructed, um, it's still one that I would consider. Let's take a look at the back here. Okay, so this right here is usually where you can tell if a piece is a veneer or not so you can see this different material right here that's plywood and then right here on top there's a layer of really thin wood that's called the veneer you can also look on the edges where a lot of the times some of the veneer might be chipped off so you can really tell again these pieces they're still good um, and I wouldn't not buy it because it's plywood, but you just wanna be really careful when you're buying pieces like this because they do take a bit more to repair. Like this one, it does have some water damage, so that would be considered in my thoughts of buying this. Some of the veneer is peeling off here, so I would just wanna be really careful. But again, it's $8, so I would have to check and see if I thought that that would be worth it in the end. Well, another bust, but stick with me. We've got some more to hit. All right, we're at Goodwill number two, which is thrift store number three for us. And I'm pretty lucky because we've got about four or five thrift stores that are right on the same exact road. So I'm taking you to a bunch of thrift stores, but really in reality, it's not like I'm going all across town. $25. Not really my style, but a pretty nice price. Again, no dovetailing, but these drawers probably wouldn't be too high traffic. Um, I wouldn't get it, but it's not a bad piece. So this piece is a massive dresser and it's got 10, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 drawers. Um, now, one thing that I look at when I'm looking at furniture is how much work it's gonna need. So I can already tell that this drawer is being pretty finicky. Now, it's possible that it'd be an easy fix, but then I've also just gotta decide how much work do I wanna put into it. Usually for me, 
the drawers are a big determining factor on whether or not I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with buying the piece. I personally think that if the drawers are in bad shape, that it's gonna be just a, a bigger time investment than I would like to do. Again, that's completely up to you, but that's something that you need to check out open and close every single drawer before you decide if you are going to be getting that piece and again decide can you fix that is it going to take a huge time investment because if so maybe it's not the best piece this piece is fifty dollars so not a horrible price for the solid dresser that it is but i'm not really one to get one dresser that has so much damage on the drawers. Not damage, but to have the drawers that don't slide in and out easily because that's not my area of expertise um, fixing the drawers like that. Another thing I look for when I'm thrifting are pieces that are highly sought after. And the reason being because, again, I want them to sell well. And when I find end tables that are just single end tables or single nightstands, I typically try to avoid those. Things that sell well for me in my area specifically are dressers and nightstand sets. Um, because those are pieces of furniture that everyone needs. So obviously they're gonna be more highly sought after. Your market might be different, but find those pieces of furniture that you know people are gonna buy and that you are willing to put your time and effort into in order to then make a sale at the end of the day. So right here, we've got a few single end tables. This is a tall end table. This is a small table. We've got a small little nightstand right there. I'm not gonna pull it out, but they might have great prices, but again, it's rare that someone will just want that one nightstand. Goodwills and thrift stores are great places to find chairs if you have a table maybe but you don't have chairs to go with them. Personally, I don't love to do table and chair sets, um, but each of these chairs are just eight bucks, so not really a horrible price for some solid wood chairs. All you would need is a table to go with it. Well, that Goodwill was another strikeout, but we're at the next place, which is Thrift America. This place always has some massive pieces of furniture. TV armoire again. So this one tickled my interest the other day when I was in here and it's it's a dresser and it's solid wood and I can tell that it's handmade. Um, it's $40, not bad. I'm just not a huge fan of the way that it was made um, and it's got a little bit more damage than I would like to deal with. Again no dovetailing we're striking out on the dovetailing today hopefully i'll find this one so you guys can see what that is each drawer locks they go in and out fairly nicely but again a little bit too much damage for me another entertainment center another tv Holder. This one can definitely tell is MDF or particle board. It's warping. It's just the way that things are made. Once you continue getting the feel for uh, different materials, you'll be able to start telling, being able to tell what pieces of furniture are made from. If you enjoy doing tables and chairs. Thrift stores are just a great place to get them. Um, 
I got, well, him and I were out there. Depending on where you are depends on how much they might cost. So this one in particular here is $100 for six chairs and a table that's expandable with a leaf. So really not too bad. It is wood. You can see it's wood here, it's worn, so you definitely need to sand this down. Um, the top, though, is probably a layer of veneer there, so it's pretty glossy. So, to be honest, I don't even think that this would be able to be sanded down. You can sort of see the shine here and the light. This material is different material than the sides and then the actual chairs themselves. So. Just be wary of what type of material of tables you get, if you, depending on what you want to do with them. This one is definitely laminate. Can't even see that. And then all the chairs are wood. So again, if you have an idea for that, it might be a good come up. Again, that one's a hundred. Six chairs. So this is a good style of chair, however, I'm not a huge fan of the patterning that's going on here. This is what I look for when I'm looking for the velvet chairs. It's got the legs, these legs would be perfect, but again, the pattern itself, I'm not a huge fan and I don't really think that this would be a very desirable pattern and I don't think that it would sell for very much. It's not velvet. But again, the style of it is there, but the pattern of it is not there. Some more single end tables. Remember, I don't typically do those, but if you're just starting out, something like this might be a good test piece. Couches galore at most thrift stores. These two brown ones here are actually pretty nice couches. This one, the longer one, does have a stain, or else I might consider picking these up. Um, and I would rip the skirts off. So not only can you do chairs, you can also do couches. These have pretty cool legs under there, so that would definitely be fun to reveal. The couches that are more floral looking obviously are very outdated. Unfortunately, this store was another bust, but we've got another one right down the road. Let's head there now. Here we are, Thrift World. We're headed inside. So it's pieces like this that have me debating quite often and the reason is because it's a very intricate design and it's going to take someone very specific to buy and I personally don't know if I like the design or not. If you didn't know, these designs on these drawers are actually made of plastic and as long as they're in good shape um, and all still intact then there's nothing wrong with getting a dresser like this this one specifically is fifty dollars so all in all for a nine drawer dresser it's not bad i just think about will this sell and the other thing that i noticed when i was testing out all of the drawers as i suggest that you do every time is that right here when the drawer comes out it's not the easiest to go back in so that right there is going to chip the paint off and i'm just not sure if that's something that i want to deal with or figure out other than this 
I would get the dresser, but that one thing right there is deterring me because I'm not really sure how I would fix that up. So, great piece of furniture, just not for me. All right, I see this mid-century dresser right here. I'm gonna check it out, see how the drawers look. So all in all, it's not in horrible condition. The drawers actually slide in and out really nicely. Straighten you out. But the bottom drawer is a little bit finicky and it drags across that bottom piece. Again, the drawers are a huge thing for me. If they aren't working properly, then I'm probably gonna pass. Plus it's 50 bucks, which I know for a lot of you, might not seem like that big of a price investment because you might have some smaller prices where you are, but here in my area, $50, maybe $60 is like the highest that I usually pay for a piece, um, a dresser. And so I'm pretty stubborn when it comes to prices like that because I know that I can get them cheaper in my area, but not a bad piece over there, just not for me. So this is a buffet, but it's a hutch buffet because this bottom part actually comes with that top part and that's a no-go for me. Hutches typically aren't selling well for me, so I'm gonna pass. This is leather. That's an interesting chair there. So Thrift World was another bust, but I did really quick want to tell you guys one thing to also look for when you're thrifting is look for the sale days. So Thrift World in particular, they have days a week that are discount days. So they have senior day, they have military day, they have teacher day. So make sure that you're looking for those specific discount days and then you can get your furniture for that much more off of the price and that much cheaper. And then places like Goodwill and even Thrift World and Thrift America, places like that, they have a color of the week where anything marked with that color tag is 30% off or 50% off or whatever they have um, going for that week. So definitely be on the lookout for those because those types of sales are really going to help you in earning more profit. It's time to head to the next thrift store. All right, next thrift store on our list. This one's called New Life Thrift. It's just more of a local thrift store that actually partners with the church. And so all of the proceeds go to support the local church. So let's head into the furniture section. This thrift store is always literally packed with furniture. Tons of couches over there. Not trying to give away my secrets to my local followers, but this may or may not be where I usually find the beautiful velvet chairs. So this one in particular, can't really see the correct coloring here, but it's green and it's a recliner. Now there is a rip right here. So that's definitely something to consider. It's pretty noticeable, pretty substantial. It's a recliner, which I don't typically do recliners. I've done a couple and currently they're still listed. So green is a very desirable color. However, just not quite sure if I am ready to try a recliner since I haven't sold the other two just yet. Well, this is $24.99. This includes the chair and the ottoman. Usually here I'll pay $13 for the chair, but then when the ottoman is a part of it, they'll kind of up the price a little bit. Now, this is like an emerald green color, so definitely desirable. It's pretty dirty. Definitely would need a little bit of cleanup. I always like to look underneath the cushion here, make sure there's no stains that are covered up. There's a little stain right there, but I think that that could come right out. Hmm. And then of course, 
Oh, there's some more stains down here. And then of course, I always look underneath. And this one in particular is a swivel rocker. If you can see that, I don't know, it might be too dark. But overall, this chair is in pretty good shape. Just a little dirty and definitely needs a little bit of love. For now, I'm gonna pass because if you guys saw our 100K video and I did 16 chairs, I'm a little bit chaired out right now and I'm still working on selling all of those. So we're gonna pause on this chair for now. But if you find chairs that are similar to this, especially in the green colors, like the emerald green that are really in style right now, you should definitely pick them up they're minimal work. All you've got to do is rip the skirt off and clean it up a little bit and then you can sell it. It's $25, you could probably sell it for, I'd say with the ottoman, you could probably go for 200 bucks. So that's eight times the price that you bought it for. It's a pretty good return on investment if you ask me. Let's see what else they've got. Again, this thrift store, I typically only buy chairs from. I don't know if I've ever bought a piece of actual furniture, dresser, buffet, anything like that from here because their prices are just a bit high. I know it's supporting a church or a charity, but I still, again, I know that I can get things like this cheaper and then this top thing could come right off. It's actually not attached. So this might be a good type of buffet. We're still looking for that dovetail. Oh yes, we found it. Okay. So drawers like this, this is called dovetailing. So that's when the side of the drawer and the front of the drawer are attached by almost like a puzzle piece and this is just going to really ensure a lot better than just nails will ensure that they're going to be stuck together for a good amount of time so you definitely want to be on the lookout for dovetail that just tells you you've got a little bit of a higher quality of furniture along with looking for a brand name you might not know what the brand name even is, like this one, I have no idea what it is, but that could help in your selling process as well. Another dresser, $55. This is a pretty small dresser for $55. Let's look at the top. Can you guys guess? Think in your head, what type of material do you think this is? It's very shiny, it's very glossy. I would avoid this if I were you, just because it's gonna be really hard to get paint to adhere to that. So unless you are going to just leave it as is, then I might avoid this type. This is gonna be that laminate material. There's different types of laminate. Um, this is very, very glossy. This is very glossy and other laminates can be a little bit more matte such as this type. This is gonna be probably more like a sticker. So again, the more and more experience that you can get with just researching furniture and figuring out for yourself what types of furniture are gonna hold more quality, the better. Let's talk about this. This desk is made out of particle board slash MDF, meaning it's probably just a sticker over the top of this material. There's no green to the wood, it's just flat. Whereas 
this desk here, you can tell that it's solid wood. When you run your hand across it, it's a little bit more rough. You can also see where the finish is coming off. So this one might be good to refinish if it were the right style of furniture. This isn't the right style of furniture for me, but I just wanted to show you the wood comparison. So solid wood, not solid wood. Let's look at the back. So here's the backing of this. You can see kind of like a solid material. This is MDF. Let's look at the back of this, oh gosh. Okay, up here. The back of this, that's gonna be real wood. It might even have a little layer of veneer on it. I'm here to tell you veneer isn't bad as long as it's in good shape. Um, typically there's gonna be a lot of furniture even if it's solid wood that is gonna be veneer so just keep that in mind as you're searching around for furniture if i were doing this dresser i would probably cover up this detail or like remove it completely somehow um, so thinking about the extra time to do that just to make it more modern some wicker furniture, that's a hundred dollar dresser there. This looks to be like it's already been painted. So if you want a project piece for 120 bucks that one is a big project piece you'd have to probably sand down to make sure none of it's peeling anymore before you were to paint again it seems like a lot of work to me yet another bust in that thrift store there were a ton of pieces but again just nothing for me I want to remind you of one thing before we hit our last stop another goodwill and the thing that I want to tell you is that don't settle. Don't settle for furniture. If you're set to get a piece um, when you go out thrifting, don't let your hopes get down if you just don't find the right piece. Don't settle for a piece that's going to give you a lot of trouble and you're going to have to do tons of work on because sometimes that's just going to, again, be more work in the end. So definitely make sure that you're getting pieces that are worth your time. So don't get discouraged, just go out the next week or continue looking on Facebook Marketplace and you'll find a good thing when it's time to find a good thing. Don't rush it, don't settle on a piece of furniture that is going to, in the end, not be worth it and not be worth your time. Let's hit the last Goodwill. All right, our time together has almost come to an end, but we've got one more Goodwill that we are going to hit, so let's head in there. This one's $24.99. These things, I think, sell well. Um, I've never personally tried it. There's a little bit of um, bamboo or rattan or whatever this material is that's sticking out. I think I'm going to pass just because I don't know how much it could sell for, but I know you guys probably let me know in the comments that I messed up, um, but this one could be good. Keep in mind that sometimes for furniture flipping, you don't even have to buy pieces that need a lot of work, like that little shelf over there wouldn't need much work to be done to it, maybe just cleaned up a little bit and then photographed in um, posted on marketplace or wherever you sell your items so always be on the lookout for more minimal work pieces as well because those could also really turn a great profit this store is pretty bare today with furniture well unfortunately our day of thrifting was a bust we hit seven thrift stores there were three goodwills and then four local shops here in my area and sorry about the exposure and unfortunately we just 
didn't find anything. But like I said, I don't want to settle for anything that I am just so excited about getting furniture that I make a mistake in buying a piece that I really didn't want. So just keep that in mind when you're out thrifting. I'm gonna hop in the truck and we'll end this. You guys, if you've never taken a camera out in the open, whether you're thrifting or grocery shopping or doing whatever, trust me, you're gonna get a lot of people looking at you and wondering what in the world you're doing because you're kind of talking to yourself in a way. But I did it for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this thrifting day, um, thrift with me because it was fun for me. I really enjoyed kind of breaking it down to you guys, what I look for, what I make sure to stay away from and different things like that. So if you guys want to see more of these thrifting videos where I bring you along my day of thrifting, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to take you guys along more often. Um, I do have several other Goodwills. I didn't even hit the Omaha metro area. So this, these seven stores were just in my local area, not even hitting all of the other Goodwills that I had mentioned in the beginning. So tons more area to cover and I'd love to bring you guys along. If you want to, just let me know. But anyway, get subscribed down below and we'll be back next week with another furniture flip. Thank you all so much for watching and hanging out with me today and I'll see you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.